pack it up and close up here. But that was one thing I couldn't do before. Leave my arm out and either bend the elbow or any of these movements. As soon as I would raise my arm, the arm would go out of control because the muscles have all switched positions. Jason's somewhat unique. He's probably the first combination hi-fi interface with the co-op system and TMR. The electronic systems he has are incredibly effective, but I think the real difference maker was his ability to be stable at all different ranges of motion and to operate the system appropriately. Even reaching up above his head, the system behaves very nicely. It's a unique setup, it's very stable. It was our first test to see if we could align the COAP system uh, with our uh, hi-fi compression zones to see how that would work and it turned out to be working pretty well. I was watching, um, there was a recent guy on YouTube who's humorous and he's, I don't think he's got the COAP system yet. And I just, just noticing the difference is just, uh, he's rotate, See him, you know, you can see him doing the flexing and yeah. just to eliminate that is just, just made a huge difference. There's definitely a uh, perceived notion that a, a body power is lighter, uh, but with this um, hi-fi socket, it's, it makes this arm feel just as light as a body powered. Um, just the way it feels, the comfort level, it's squeezed in around the bone, mm -hmm. so it's actually given it uh, more stability. Um, across the entire arm, instead of a feeling before it seemed like it was tighter at the top and looser on the mm -hmm. bottom, now it's spread out across the arm. Um, that's definitely made a difference in the comfort. There's no air gapping. Um, it's definitely, uh, there's no pain on the distal end of my bone, but my humerus. Um, I had prior to this, uh, when I raised my arm up and put all the weight on it, mm -hmm. it's more evenly stretch out. It follows the philosophy that we have, which is the primary mover is the underlying bone, not the soft tissue of the limb itself, obviously. So the thing that we're able to do then is by isolating the bone and really controlling it within the interface, then he gets the ability of the prosthesis following that uh, skeletal motion, as opposed to other systems where a lot of that skeletal motion is eaten up inside the interface. So when someone lifts up, the prosthesis is usually hanging down here even though they're lifting their bone as high as they can because it's not following the skeletal motion. It's allowing the motion to be like this inside. And with us, it follows it directly. So not only does it follow the full range of motion, but it also feels lighter and it's more comfortable at those ranges of motion. And what's so cool is the angle of your arm is almost exactly the angle of the prosthetic device and that's, that's the key right there. Yeah, yeah you can, that. I can actually so cool. go overhead. Even though it's tighter, um, and then the muscles are, are squeezed into the open areas in here, it has actually made it, it is more comfortable. Um, it's just as easy to get into. Um, the, there's no pinch points uh, within, you know, I can go in every direction and there's no pinch points. Um, I've gotten way more uh, degrees of freedom as well. I was able to lower the socket on the outside, and so I'm able to get more degrees of freedom up. <laughs> it's more responsive because um, it is a tighter fit, and so I have a better connection to all the sensors. I think on the other one where it started, to, it was looser, so it allowed uh, sweat to penetrate into the arm, and I started getting mixed signals because of the sweat. Um, but. Uh, being that it is tighter, I don't think you're, you're, if you have the air gaps, that's your ability to sweat. So I think without the air gaps and having that tight fitting, it's, it reduces that as well. That's great. Nice. Look at that. Ooh, sweet.